Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I got a series of emails in the last couple of weeks from a subscriber trying to do a relatively what appeared initially to be a simple feature on one of the parts that he was working on. I'm going to be very generic here because this could be applicable to just about anything. And what I'm talking about is a surface serration very much like what I have drawn here. When he asked me, what do you think? I said, well, it's a piece of cake. Tilt the head on your machine and just move the table in the x-axis and keep the quill set where it is and you're going to have a very symmetrical pattern. That's what you're going to come up with. Well, I got a text message back, an email actually, that said, sorry about that, I can't because the head on my mill doesn't move. It's stationary. And I have found out that when I get to the end of my stair step, the stair step is digging into the part and it doesn't look anything like what I want it to look like. Well, there's a way to approach that. The very first thing that you need to do is figure out how much region on your part you want to consume and how many steps you want to consume with it. That's the first thing. That's the first thing I would do. So for demonstration purposes, we're going to use an inch and a half and we're going to put in one, two, three, four, five, six cuts. That makes it six at 250 wide. That's the easy part. Now what you need to realize is unless you're going to go out and invest in a form cutter, some type of dovetail cutter, uh, you're going to use an end mill, it's going to be a square corner. That is the known number two. These are all going to be square corners on here. So, number three. How are we going to cut that stair step? At an inch and a half, 250 wide, with a mill that doesn't move. I'm not going to look at it like this anymore, which is why I got these nifty little post-it notes on here. We're going to look at it like this now. And I think you can see now that this is no longer an inch and a half long. The resultant feature will be an inch and a half long, but we are no longer looking at an inch and a half worth of linear movement. The stair steps are not 250 wide anymore because our 250 dimension is right here. So now we have a triangle that we need to figure out. And I can tell you that it's a lot easier if you know basically what angle you want that to be versus what depth you want that to be. Because figuring this out based on the depth without having an angle, well that gets a whole lot more difficult than just saying, okay, well we're going to use 20 degrees. Call it 20 degrees. Here's our triangle. Twenty degree nose. Two fifty run because when it was up, it's the high, the hypotenuse. Two fifty. Now this is a sequence of very simple X Z moves. Piece of cake. What size cutter? Do you need a specific size cutter to do this? No, you don't, because you have the side of your cutter will be hanging out here in space, and you're only going to be using one corner of the cutter to do this. So you're going to move over this length right here, and come down this length right here, oh, oh, and keep on going. It's relatively easy. Now, it is unavoidable as a machinist, a toolmaker, an engineer, whatever, to not have geometry and trig jammed down your throat. And this is a perfect example of that. Identifying the triangles that you're going to need is the geometry part, and then figuring out the legs and heights and rises and runs and whatever else. Now, that's the trig part. Now, on a triangle like this, in order to figure out the other two legs, if you have the hypotenuse, I think that's called hypotenuse, and the face angle, well, I got my notes right here, and I'm just going to tell you how to do it. You can take the notes if you want. 250 times the sine of 20 degrees equals C. And this is C over here. 250 times the cosine of 20 degrees equals the base. So that's easy. Look it up in your trig calculator, look it up in your watch, smartphone, online, in your ITW trig book, 
wherever you're going to get the number from. Sine and cosine gives you these two values right there. They then become the moves. And in this particular triangle, this leg here, C, becomes 085, 5. And the base angle becomes 234.9. I'm going to go out in the shop, I'm going to grab a piece of one inch square aluminum, I'm going to put a 20 degree angle block underneath it, and I'm going to make this in a matter of minutes using those values. So let's take a walk out to the shop, see how it goes. The two black marks on this particular part are exactly an inch and a half apart. This is positioned in my vise with a 20 degree gauge block underneath. You can see that it's the uh, same. There's also a video on my channel about how to make these if you don't have them. Now the one thing you don't want to do is just start doing this blindly and end up with a feature on your part that you really weren't looking for. So what I have in my collet right now is a 375 gauge pin. And it's a 375 gauge pin because I'm going to use a 375 cutter. I'm going to bring this gauge pin down and I'm going to visually align this pin so that it's right on the edge of this black line. Let's go behind and come back. Come on with the autofocus. You dog. Boy, this is sensitive. All right, you go. That's a good shot. Okay, I'm going to move it back just a hair. Let's call that zero. Right now is where you zero your dial, zero your digital, do whatever you need to do. But that is going to be the inside edge of your very first step. All right, I have X. Y digital readout zero right now. Let me put a 375 cutter in here and we're going to come across and we're just going to scratch the surface of this, feeding it back and forth on the Y axis, and that'll be our Z zero. Okay, so give me a second to change out the tool. We'll be right back. All right, we have a 3 8 end mill, two flute, and I am going to run this back and forth. It looks like it's touching right now, but it's actually not. What we're going to do is Look for this witness mark to show up right on this black line or anywhere on this surface. But from what we just did with the gauge pin, the first hard corner that we're going to form is going to be in line with that inch and a half reference mark right there. So let's scratch that up and set a Z0. Sometime today. All right, here we go. There it is. I'm hoping the camera can see that. Let's come back across so you can see it. I am now going to shift my table 
this way. About five thou so I have a cleanup surface and I don't have to worry about digging into my material and getting something all ugly. So I'm going to shift over 510, whatever you want to leave. I say finish, cut. Go ahead and do it. Now I'm going to bring the table up 85 thou at a time as I move over. Here goes 85 up. Let's make it 80. Go to 85. And bring the table back this way to the zero that you normally had so you have a nice surface to register on. And this is a 5 thou cleanup cut on each face, the bottom and the left side. Fine cut. Move the table on the X. The 234 that was on the board. And I'm going to give it an extra five for cleanup. Now, when I do this, there should be almost a non existent rib right in this general vicinity. And as far as the camera looks, it's like I'm right on the cutter. I'm actually about five inches away. That section of material right there in the center should almost disappear. Let's try again. Okay, you can see that the math is good. There is still a witness surface from the original material there. I'm coming up by five for my finish. And over five this way for my finish. And this is where you're going to end up with a little bit sharper ledge on top. Now when you're doing this, after you've done your map, just make sure that your end mill that you're using is larger in diameter than the calculated size of the land that you want to cut, and you should be fine. All right, let's run through the other four and see how it looks. All right, let's pop that out of there, lay a scale on it, and compare it to the required features. See how we did. Okay, guys, I think you can see that the results are favorable. Let's see dimensionally how it came out. You're looking for six cuts at a quarter inch wide, tip to tip, taking up an inch and a half of space. I would say that's close enough to argue. Now intentionally, I cut one tooth without leaving the five thou on the x-axis for cleanup. Let's see if you can tell which one it is. I think it's pretty obvious. Right there in the center. This is a 5 thou left on the bottom for facing, and 5 thou was not left on that for cleanup. 
so you can see the difference. It's only five thousandths of an inch, but it sure makes a difference. Now, if you were to try to match this on the side, what you would look be looking to match is this face naturally and the root. As soon as you get that line to match, you can just stair step it exactly the same way you just did and all the other steps should conform. There you go. Not tough. It's a whole lot easier if you know the angle. You start off at the angle and once you decide on an angle, of course, do the math see if the feature is going to be too deep for you. If it is too deep, then go with a lesser angle, shallower angle, smaller angle, whatever you want to call it, and that will bring the depth up for you in case there's a wall thickness issue in this area. That is a 250 tooth, 20 thou deep, and relatively painless. It would have been a little bit faster, guys, but the tripod was right in the way of my uh, y-axis crank, and I had to keep walking around to set everything. So there you go. I hope that answers a few questions for the people that had the questions. And if there are any further questions, by all means, put them in the comment line. You know I'll answer you. Thanks. Okay, guys, off camera, I took the liberty of finishing up the other side just because I wanted to try it. And it is the very first cut that proves to be the most difficult you have to look for this line right here. You can see where my thumbnail is. That line has got to come around and be right on the edge. Or you will reestablish a corner. I would say this is about, if I had to guess, maybe three thou away from where it should ideally be. But depending on what you're going to do with it, blast it, wheel it, anodize it, three thou is nothing. Well, of course, if there's a dimension there, then it's something, but there you go. All the steps were exactly the same on the flip side. 85 and a half and 235. It worked really well. Neat question. Appreciate you asking. All right, well, that didn't turn out too bad. Uh, like I said, when I was cutting, make sure that whatever cutter you use is large enough to consume the land that you want to cut. You'll get a much nicer finish. And leave a couple thou for a finish pass. You can see from that one that I did not the difference in the face appearance of that particular feature. On the second side, the first step is the one that's going to be the fussy one. Get it to the point where you cosmetically like what you have. Lock everything down. Start fresh with all your numbers. Each step should fall into place as tightly as you held the first set of features. Anyway, I hope you liked that. I hope it answered the questions for the people that were interested in exactly how that's done. Looking at it this way, doing all the math, signs and cosines, that is going to be your friend. So when in doubt, figure it out. Look at how much meat you have on your cross section. You don't want to break through if you don't have to. Hope you got something out of that. Thanks for watching. Happy Thanksgiving for everybody that celebrates Thanksgiving. And until next time, Joe Pye, Mass Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.